Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God by Jonathan Edwards We find it easy to tread on and crush a worm that we see crawling on the earth. So it is easy for us to cut or singe a slender thread that anything hangs by. Thus easy is it for God when he pleases to cast his enemies down to hell. They are now the objects of that very same anger and wrath of God that is expressed in the torments of hell. And the reason why they don't go down to hell at each moment is not because God, in whose power they are, is not then very angry with them, as angry as he is with many of those miserable creatures that he is now tormenting in hell, and do there feel and bear the fierceness of his wrath, Yea, God is a great deal more angry with great numbers that are now on earth. Yea, doubtless with many that are now in this congregation that it may be are at ease and quiet than he is with many of those that are now in the flames of hell. Unconverted men walk over the pit of hell on a rotten covering, and there are innumerable places in this covering so weak that they won't bear their weight, and these places are not seen. The arrows of death fly unseen at noonday. The sharpest sight can't discern them. God has so many different unsearchable ways of taking wicked men out of the world and sending them to hell that there is nothing to make it appear that God had need to be at the expense of a miracle or go out of the ordinary course of his providence to destroy any wicked man at any moment. So that thus it is that natural men are held in the hand of God over the pit of hell. They have deserved the fiery pit and are already sentenced to it. And God is dreadfully provoked. His anger is as great towards them as to those that are actually suffering the executions of the fierceness of his wrath in hell, and they have done nothing in the least to appease or abate that anger. Neither is God in the least bound by any promise to hold him up one moment. The devil is waiting for them. Hell is gaping for them. The flames gather and flash about them and would fain lay hold on them and swallow them up. The fire pent up in their own hearts is struggling to break out and they have no interest in any mediator. There are no means within reach that can be any security to them. In short... They have no refuge, nothing to take hold of. The bow of God's wrath is bent, and the arrow made ready on the string, and justice bends the arrow at your heart and strains the bow, and it is nothing but the mere pleasure of God and that of an angry God without any promise or obligation at all that keeps the arrow one moment from being made drunk with your blood. Thus are all you that never passed under a great change of heart by the mighty power of the Spirit of God upon your souls, all that were never born again and made new creatures and raised from being dead in sin to a state of new and before altogether unexperienced light and life, 
However, you may have reformed your life in many things and may have had religious affections and may keep up a form of religion in your families and closets and in the house of God and may be strict in it. You are thus in the hands of an angry God. Tis nothing but his mere pleasure that keeps you from being this moment swallowed up in everlasting destruction. The God that holds you over the pit of hell much as one holds a spider or some loathsome insect over the fire abhors you and is dreadfully provoked. His wrath towards you burns like fire. He looks upon you as worthy of nothing else but to be cast into the fire. He is of purer eyes than to bear to have you in his sight. You are ten thousand times so abominable in his eyes as the most hateful venomous serpent is in ours. You have offended him infinitely more than ever a stubborn rebel did his prince. And yet is nothing but his hand that holds you from falling into the fire every moment. Tis to be ascribed to nothing else that you did not go to hell the last night that you were suffered to awake again in this world after you closed your eyes to sleep and there is no other reason to be given why you have not dropped into hell since you arose in the morning but that God's hand has held you up. There is no other reason to be given why you have not gone to hell since you have sat here in the house of God provoking his pure eyes by your sinful wicked manner of attending his solemn worship Yea, there is nothing else that is to be given as a reason why you don't this very moment drop down into hell. Oh, sinner, consider the fearful danger you are in. Tis a great furnace of wrath. A wide and bottomless pit full of the fire of wrath that you are held over in the hand of that God whose wrath is provoked and incensed as much against you as against many of the damned in hell. You hang by a slender thread with the flames of divine wrath flashing about it and ready every moment to singe it and burn it asunder and you have no interest in any mediator and nothing to lay hold of to save yourself, nothing to keep off the flames of wrath, nothing of your own, nothing that you ever have done, nothing that you can do to induce God to spare you one moment. Tis everlasting wrath. It would be dreadful to suffer this fierceness and wrath of Almighty God one moment. But you must suffer it to all eternity. There will be no end to this exquisite, horrible misery. When you look forward, you shall see a long forever, a boundless duration before you, which will swallow up your thoughts and amaze your soul, and you will absolutely despair of ever having any deliverance, any end, any mitigation, any rest at all. 
You will know certainly that you must wear out long ages, millions of millions of ages in wrestling and conflicting with this almighty merciless vengeance. And then when you have so done, when so many ages have actually been spent by you in this manner, you will know that all is but a point to what remains, so that your punishment will indeed be infinite. Oh, who can express what the state of a soul in such circumstances is? All that we can possibly say about it gives but a very feeble, faint representation of it. Tis inexpressible and inconceivable. For who knows the power of God's anger? How dreadful is the state of those that are daily and hourly in danger of this great wrath and infinite misery. But this is the dismal case of every soul in this congregation that has not been born again, however moral and strict, sober and religious they may otherwise be. And now you have an extraordinary opportunity a day wherein Christ has flung the door of mercy wide open and stands in the door calling and crying with a loud voice to poor sinners. A day wherein many are flocking to him and pressing into the kingdom of God. Many are daily coming from the east west, north, and south, many that were very lately in the same miserable condition that you are in, are in now an happy state, with their hearts filled with love to him that has loved them and washed them from their sins in his own blood, and rejoicing in hope of the glory of God. How awful is it to be left behind at such a day, to see so many others feasting while you are pining and perishing, to see so many rejoicing and singing for joy of heart, while you have cause to mourn for sorrow of heart and howl for vexation of spirit, how can you rest one moment in such a condition? Therefore, let everyone that is out of Christ now awake and fly from the wrath to come.